Good morning. Welcome to Camp Hill Presbyterian Church. It's wonderful to see all of you who are with us here inside and those of you who are worshiping with us virtually from home. It is wonderful to be united across the airways as we are united in the spirit of the living Lord. So we welcome to you to you the, to this service of the fourth Sunday in Lent as we continue our journey with Jesus to the cross and the gift of resurrection life of Easter morning. So the grace and peace of our Lord be with you all. Please join me in our responsive call to worship. In the name of God. In the name of the Son. In the name of the Holy Spirit. And our first hymn is Fairest Lord Jesus. As we continue in this season of the continual pruning of our lives, of all that causes us to stray from the love of God, and the release of all that which is not life-giving within us, to make room for the new grace that Christ died to bring us. So let us confess our need for that grace first in silence, and then with one voice using our common prayer of confession. Let us pray. Amen. 
Amen. And with one voice, we pray. God of all seasons, in your pattern of things, there is a time for keeping and a time for losing, a time for building up and a time for pulling down. In this holy season of Lent, as we journey with our Lord to the cross, help us to discern in our lives what we must lay down and what we must take up, what we must end and what we must begin. Give us grace to lead a disciplined life in glad obedience and with the joy which comes from a closer walk with Christ. In his name we pray, amen. There is no greater moment of joy in the heart of God than when we bow down before God and offer our humble and contrite repentance and seek the gift of his grace, of his freedom, of his joy that frees us from all our sin and creates us anew. So my sisters and brothers in Christ, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, our sin is forgiven of us. And in this moment, we are made alive again. Praise and thanks be to God. Our first scripture reading as we continue in this series on the seven last words of Christ from the cross comes to us from the psalm that he quoted while he would lie dying on the cross. It is Psalm 22, verses 1 through 11. So listen to God's word to you this day. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me, from the words of my groaning? Oh, my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but find no rest. Yet, you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you, our ancestors trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you, they cried and were saved. In you, they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth, and since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no help. This is the word of our God. 
Thanks be to God. And our second scripture reading comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, the 15th chapter, beginning at the 33rd verse. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to Jesus to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. These are the words of our Lord. Thanks be to God. If we gaze upon the cross and are inclined to think that Jesus only had to endure a few hours of physical pain, totally secure in the comfort of God's presence and confident in the hope that God would raise him from the dead, then we fail to see the true agony that Jesus endured. The emotional and physical suffering that began before those final three hours of his life. As we recall that after the Last Supper with his disciples, as he had done at every critical moment of his ministry, Jesus went off to pray, to be with God, his Father, in the Garden of Gethsemane. And while praying, he became so afraid that he sweat blood and cried out, Abba, Father, if everything is possible, then take this cup from me quite literally pouring out his suffering before God. Jesus became a wash in God's love and was given the strength of the Spirit to surrender his will to whatever would happen next. And then with each passing moment, Jesus' agony increased. He suffered the deep, stabbing pain of betrayal at the hands of someone he loved, someone he trusted. He was accused and accursed by the very people he came to save, stripped and beaten at the hands of callous Roman soldiers. And then while hanging on the cross, Jesus experienced the darkest, most agonizing moment of his life. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's the only time in his entire life that he didn't call God Abba, which literally means daddy. In those of the, these of the last seven words spoken by Jesus, we hear how human he really was, feeling alone and abandoned by the very one with whom and for whom he had lived his entire life. And as I said, he was quoting his ancient ancestors the cries they cried in their own times of distress. But never before had Jesus himself ever felt that distance. 
from God his Father. And in that very human experience, Jesus bore the full brunt of our fallen human nature, of our sin. Calvin wrote of this moment, quote, no more terrible abyss can be conceived than to feel yourself forsaken and estranged from God. Every time we recite the Apostles' Creed and say Jesus descended into hell, we are talking about this moment on the cross. And who among us hasn't uttered a similar cry? Where are you, God? Don't you care? about my suffering. Those moments we descend into that deepest abyss of feeling as though God has abandoned us. So in those moments, we can find comfort in knowing that our Lord and Savior was subject to that same agonizing experience. Yet, Yet he still cried, my God, my God. Words that again remind us that our Savior died the way he had lived. In that most harrowing of moments, he might not have called God Daddy, but he did call upon his God. His very cry an affirmation of trust. Faith at its very core is trusting in God even when we don't feel God's presence. And though we may feel as though God has forgotten us, left us alone to suffer, we have the same assurance of Jesus' promise when he said to those disciples who were about to feel totally abandoned, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Jesus, our God, who chose to become very real and very human, is right there with us holding us, loving us, even crying with us in our pain. I imagine that in response to his own agonizing cries, God whispered those same words of assurance into his son's ears. And just maybe, Jesus remembered the words of another psalm he had memorized. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. These very difficult words for us to hear remind us also this morning of how we are to companion those who feel as though God has abandoned them. We call it the ministry of presence, a ministry to which every disciple of Jesus is called. It's simply our willingness to be with people in their suffering, even if it makes us feel uncomfortable And I think often our discomfort stems from our thinking that we need to do something, find some way to alleviate their pain or their suffering, or that we need to say the right thing or have the answers to their questions of why is this happening? Where is God? Doesn't God care about me? 
thinking that we had the answers to those questions actually might be the most unhelpful thing we can do. Because rather than worrying about saying the right thing, we are to know and to trust that we are ministering simply by being present, by sitting with another person, even if it's in a silent embrace. It's what Jesus did all throughout his ministry. He entered into people's suffering. He sat with them. He touched them. He listened. The love and the care and the compassion of our risen Lord and Savior is embodied as we are with the other person in their moment of crisis. And we need not say or do anything. You may have heard this familiar parable before. There's a guy walking down the street and he falls into a hole. And the walls are so steep that he can't get out. A doctor passes by and the guy shouts out, hey you, can you help me get out of this hole? So the doctor writes a prescription and throws it down the hole and moves on. Then a pastor comes walking by and the guy shouts, hey pastor, can you help me get out of this hole? Pastor writes a prayer, throws it down the hole, and moves on. Then his friend Joe walks by. Hey, Joe, it's me. Can you help me get out of this hole? And Joe jumps into the hole. And the guy says, why would you do that? Now we're both down here, stuck. And the friend says, yeah, but I've been down here before. And I know the way out. So when those who we love are suffering, and maybe even feeling that God has abandoned them, we don't let them feel abandoned by us. We walk alongside them. And then the Lord will lead us to know what is the appropriate thing to do in the appropriate moment. And the greatest gift we can give them is the gift of doing their believing for them. As we share our own experience of God's presence in our lives, when we were stuck in that deep pit of agony, And we show them the way to their risen Lord and Savior who promises them he will never leave them nor forsake them. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we are here because you have showed us the way. By the life you lived, you showed us the way of righteousness. And by the way you have companioned us on our life's journey, in times of joy and in times of sorrow, in times of health and in times of suffering, you have taught us the way to show others into your loving presence. So we pray that we might continue on this journey with you through suffering into the gift of resurrection life. In your precious name we pray, amen.
as we come to this point in the service when we would collect our tithes and offerings. Continued thanks for your continued generosity. Grateful for the mission and the ministry that we are enabled to do here through this church. So as we listen to this offertory, let us uh, rededicate ourselves to the work of reconciliation and peace that Jesus died to bring to our world. Thank you, Caleb. And let us dedicate our offerings and our lives to the coming of God's kingdom. Let us pray. God of all mercy and abundance, we thank you for these gifts and promise to use them to the best of our abilities as we follow you on this Lenten path. Through the power of your spirit, may these gifts be used to bring renewal and resurrection to those who need it most. Amen. Before we uh, I, uh, enter into prayer, just in case you didn't notice, there are prayer requests, uh, paper or pieces of paper on the table as you come in. So if you would like a person uh, included in the prayer, uh, fill that out and they'll be brought forward. Um, so we're going to pray this morning for uh, Faye Ronimus, who's recovering from surgery, for uh, Ward uh, Vanderhaeg, who's actually having surgery uh, tomorrow morning, 
and a great joy that the preschool on Friday celebrated the adoption. And I'm just going to call her Kay for uh, confidentiality purposes into her forever family. So you'll hear me pray for them. So let us now go before our loving God of all mercy. Let us pray. Gracious and most loving God, we thank you for this holy season where you are continuing to cleanse us from all the debris in our lives that keep us from experiencing the fullness of your grace and love and the peace and freedom in which you desire us to live. So help us to surrender as Jesus did his will that we might surrender our wills to your will for us, for all creation, and for all the world. We pray for our world, O oh God, that it might continue to move through the darkness of this time into the newness of hope and new life, the restoration of relationships, the renewal of our health, and the restoration of our communities. We pray that we might continue to be mindful of all those who suffer, whether it be in health or loss of income, loss of a job, or loss of a loved one during this year and during these difficult days, that they might not feel abandoned by you, but feel a strong sense of your presence sustaining them and comforting them, and the trust that all our suffering is redeemed here on earth and hereafter into new life with you. We do pray for all our parents and our teachers and our children as they continue to navigate schooling and work and time apart, that they too might be given your strength and look forward to the day when they can resume the normalcy of their education and the friendships that they miss and long for. We pray that you would continue to raise up peacemakers and justice doers and teach all of us in the ways of peace and reconciliation, that we learn how to live and converse with those with whom we might disagree or the strangers in our midst, that we might be truly the children you call us and have created us to be. So we pray for your church throughout the world, O oh God, that you would continue to grant her vision and resources and light in the midst of these times of reformation and transformation, that in the groanings of our spirits, we might see signs of the awakening of renewal and rebirth and the glimpses of hope and draw your people back to yourself through us as we seek to be the hands and heart and feet of Christ. God of great compassion, you who are not indifferent to our suffering, you who desire our love and our peace and our joy and the shalom, the wholeness 
that you created for us. We pray for all those who are suffering this day, whether it be in body, mind, or spirit. Pray for all those on our prayer list, but especially this day for Faye and for Ward, that you would pour your healing power within them and sustain them in your loving arms as they await that healing. We pray with great celebration that Kay has now been adopted into her forever family. And as we rejoice with them, we pray for all children and youth who are awaiting in foster care or other placements for that gift of family. But as they wait, that they would know you as God their father and Jesus their friend. In the sacredness of this moment, O oh God, we lift before you those within our own families and in our own small worlds who have asked us to pray for them as we do that now silently. Finally, oh God, we do pray for those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, whether that pain be new or long-standing, that in especially this season where Jesus transformed death into new life and yet shed his own tears of sorrow might bring them some sense of consolation and their memories some moments of joy. We entrust all these prayers and the prayers of our hearts into your will, knowing that you hear them, that you answer them in your time and in your way as we offer them as disciples of the one who came that we might have life and have it in abundance, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so with one voice, we do pray that prayer that he taught us to pray, praying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And our final hymn is the very familiar and beloved, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross.
We do remember that in those moments when we feel abandoned by our God, that our God does not forsake us. There are no God-forsaken places. There are no God-forsaken people. We're mindful this morning it is we who forsake our God and that we live in a world where people forsake their God. And because of that, we too have participated in the death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Loving God, as we journey through this holy season of Lent, may we be open to your presence. Give us strength to make the changes that are needed in our lives and the courage to take on the work of transforming the world. Amen. And now may the grace, mercy, and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion and fellowship of God's Holy Spirit abide with you and all those you love this day and forevermore. Amen.